Good morning, all you cool cats and kittens. We're so glad that you're here for our very last day of At Home with APS's summer program. So let's get started with calendar. So we are still in our fine summer month of July. And yesterday was July 8th. So that means today must be July 9th. Add our nine to our chart. And let's go ahead and think about our pattern for July. So we have a pattern of circle, red circle, green triangle, red circle, green square. So yesterday had a green square. So that means we're starting our pattern all over again today on our last day. So what shape does nine get July 9th? You're right. It gets a red circle. Let's go ahead and add our date to our 10 frame tracker. So yesterday was July 8th, so we had five and three more for eight. We're gonna add one more dot to make the pattern for nine. Now we have five and four more for nine. And we can easily see that we're just one dot away from reaching 10. So today is July 9th, but what day of the week is it? Today is Thursday, July 9th. So let's move our tags around down here. So if today is Thursday, what was yesterday? What day comes before Thursday? Wednesday, it's that middle of the weekday. And if today is Thursday, what will tomorrow be? That's right, tomorrow will be Friday. Friday is a day that almost everyone likes, right? Because it takes us into Saturday and Sunday, our weekend days. Okay, so now is the time where if you have a paper that you can use, fold it in half hamburger style and fold it in half again to make four squares or four rectangles quadrilaterals, and you can work the um, number of the day with me. So today's number is nine. Ooh, oh, I need to turn on my pen. Let's do that. Okay. So today's number is nine. Nine gets a nice round top and a straight back. And how do we write nine as a word? What sound do you hear first? N, n, I hear an N to start, right? N. What makes that next sound? N, I, n. An I, right? I hear an I. Then we get another N. And at the end, we have that silent E that helps the I make its I sound. So this is how we spell nine as a word, N-I-N-E, nine. All right, so what are some ways that we could represent nine on our number of the day? So, you know, I think about dot patterns quite a bit. And when you have a dot pattern for nine, it looks like groups of three. Did you know that? Here is the dot pattern for nine. And inside that dot pattern, you can see the pattern for six and three more, six, seven, eight, nine. So we might think about nine as that. We could write a number sentence, six plus three equals nine. And we might have seen that in our dot pattern, six here and three more. What's another way we could think about our nine? Let's latch onto our dot pattern a little bit more. So I see also, right, three plus three. You can do it, Pen. There we go. 
plus three is also nine. And this is a number sentence that's kind of hidden inside the six plus three, right? Because six has a three inside of it and another three. So we've added one more three on for nine. All right, um, we might also think about our 10 frame. How about some subtraction with our 10 frame? How many more do we need to get to 10? Just one. So if we wanted to do some subtraction, we could do 10 minus one also equals nine. We have another addition sentence here too, right? Five plus four also gives us that nine. We'll go ahead and write that one down too. Okay, let's go ahead and place nine on our hundreds chart chunk over here. So we get nine here in the middle. What number comes right after nine? One of our favorite numbers to use. That's right, it's 10. What number comes right before nine? Yes, eight comes right before nine. Okay, and when we look at where nine is on our big hundreds chart, can we make that big jump back, a jump back of 10? Not yet. Soon, if we get into the next row, we could. But for today, we cannot. But can we make that big jump of 10 forward? You bet we can. So what is 10 more than nine? A 10 and a nine makes 19. So 19 is 10 more than nine. Excellent. Thank you for helping me to think about our number of the day. So now let's go ahead and pull out our counting jar. Today we're gonna count bears. Are you ready to count with me? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, here's a little one. Oh, nine. <laughs> Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, another little guy, he stayed on the table, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and 20. So how many bears all together? There's 20 if we count the one on the floor. There's 20 all together. So how many are on the table then? 19. We'll go ahead and go with our original number of 20 because that is how many bears we counted even though one fell on the floor. So if you are a kindergartner at home, see if you can find 20 things to count. If you are a first grader, you're going to double this amount. What's 20 plus 20? You got it, it's 40. So first graders are looking for 40 things to count. And second graders are going to double that 40. What's 40 plus 40? I knew you knew, it's 80. Second graders are going to look for 80 things to count, and that is your counting jar assignment for today. Okay, so we, um, I wanted to do a little bit of counting on our, count, our um, hundreds chart, and you know what I was thinking about, you guys? I was thinking about our pattern for July, our shape pattern that we used. And do you know what I noticed about it? I noticed something about the red circles. What kinds of numbers are the red circles on? Hmm. 
The red circles are on, let's see, these numbers. I'm going to flash them to you. So we have a red circle on one. We have a red circle on, oh, Miss Karnas should have used the other cards. What's the next one? On three. We have a red circle on, what's the next one? Five. We have a red circle on seven. And then we have a red circle on our number of the day, nine. Did you notice something about all of those numbers when we looked at them on frames? They are odd numbers because when we look at them on a frame, each unit, each dot that makes up the number does not have a pair. There's always one left with no partner. So our pattern ended up to be that our red circles were on all odd numbers. So I thought we might count the odd numbers on our hundreds chart. Are you ready? Or you can count them from the calendar. Remember, it's like, it's like counting every other number. One, three, five, seven, nine. Those are all of our numbers that had red circles. They're all odd numbers. Excellent job. What about our numbers that have green shapes? What kinds of numbers are those, do you think? You're right, they're all even numbers. Let's count the even numbers now. Two, four, six, eight. Those are all the numbers on our calendar that divide evenly. When we divide them up, every unit has a partner to be with. Okay, thank you for thinking about odd and even and doing some counting with me. We're gonna look at our last riddle and then we're gonna turn it over to Mrs. Obenshane. Here we go. Amazing grain. This type of corn is far from plain. In fact, it's wild for a grain. Brown and gold and sometimes blue, even red and purple too. Can you count each colored ear? A smart approach is very clear. Please consider many ways, then add a cross to solve this maze. And maze is another word for corn, isn't it? So we might, because of the colors, we might wanna count by colors. But in this riddle, we're being asked to count across. I wonder why. Let's look at the first row. Two, and one more is three, and then two more. Three and two makes five. Is there a five in every row? Two and two, and one more, five. Two and two and one more, five. We could count these by fives. Five, 10, 15 ears of corn or maize. Nice job. That's gonna wrap up our calendar for today. And Mrs. Obenshane is gonna come out with a task for you now. Okay. Let's clear this board off. And we're gonna shift over. So we have a problem to work on today called double down. And we have been working on doubling a lot. So I thought this would be a fun one for us to try out. All right, let's see what it is asking us. Two students were walking to school one day when they saw <laughs> two teachers, each walking with two dogs. Two seems like a, a 
pretty easy number that we're going to work with with some doubling. So we're going to talk about it first, and then we'll see what it looks like on the bead rack. All right, so the first question that they have for us is each dog's, each dog had two ears. How many dog ears were there in all? So let's go back up to our story. Two students walking to school one day saw two teachers, each walking with two dogs. So what is important there? We're trying to figure out the number of dogs. So I don't think it really matters that we saw, we know how many students, because we need to think about how many dogs. So let's focus in on that. Two teachers with two dogs. So that is going to give us two dogs with one teacher plus two dogs with the other teacher, right? So that is a double that we have worked on before. Two dogs with one teacher and two dogs with another teacher, right? Two plus two is four. That's a nice, easy one for us to see. So each dog, so this is dog, so let's label that. So we have four dogs, and now our question asks us, each dog has two ears, just like us, right? How many dog ears were there in all? So if we have four dogs, and they each have two ears, we should be able to double that again, right? So if we have four dogs, and they each have two ears, we'll see that this is one dog, this is another dog, this is the third dog, and that's the fourth dog. So how many ears do we have all together? Eight, another double, right? Eight, and we'll make sure we label that. So the answer to number one, this was our extra information we needed to figure out, was eight ears. Each dog had two ears. How many dog ears were there in all? So whenever you're answering these kinds of questions, you need to make sure that you label your numbers so that it's clear to whoever looks at your work what you were thinking and what your answer was. Okay, number two said, on each dog's ears, there were two fleas. Hmm. Each dog ear had two fleas. So we have eight ears. So we'll put our ears on top now. We have eight ears. Five and three makes eight. That's another way to make eight. And then on each ear, there were two fleas. So again, we can think about that's one ear, that's another ear, that's another ear, and so on that shows us the two fleas on each. So eight plus another eight equals what? Can we tell from the bead rack? The nice thing about this tool that I really like is you can really see the 10. If you don't know the eight and eight, what that is right away, I could think about, oh, there's 10 red beads, right? Because five and five is 10 and six white beads. And 10 and six is what? 16. And what were these 16 of? Do you remember from the problem? We were figuring out fleas. So we want to make sure we label that. So we, it's clear what our answer is. OK. The last of our doubling problem for this part says each flea called two more fleas to join them. How many fleas were there? So we know we had 16 fleas and two more fleas joined them. So we're going to have to double it again. I think that's going to be bigger than what we have in our bead rack, right? Because that only goes to 20 and we already have 16. So we're going to shift and we're going to think about using a number line to show this one. So if we have 16 
And I, can, I know that 16 is made up of a 10 and a 6, right? Because we just talked about that. 16 is a 10 and a 6. So if I add the 10 on my number line, so 16 plus a 10, and we've been practicing counting that way, right? 16 and another 10, 26. And then I've got to add six more. And we can do a couple things. Six and six is a double, and we know that that's 12. Or we could just try to add through 10, because we started talking about what makes, what groups make 10, right? Do you remember what number went with six to make 10? Let's see if we can find the pattern here. Here, it's right on top. If we have six on our 10 frame, we need four more. So I'm gonna jump four. And then I still have two more to go because the four and two make six. So 32, 16 plus 16 is 32. All right, I have another problem for us to work on. I can get this to roll down. About Alyssa's family. And we're gonna keep working with the number line on this one. Okay, we'll just put this right down here. So since we started talking about a number line, and we've talked about that before, we're going to look at if we can use a number line, or we could use the bead rack if it's a better tool, um, depending on the size of the numbers, right? We can do smaller numbers on here, but we need to use a number line to do larger numbers. So look carefully at Alyssa's family tree. A family tree shows how a family goes together. And so Alyssa is right here. So she has a sister and a brother. This is her mom and dad. See how the lines connect them? And then her dad has a brother who is her uncle. And then those are their parents. And mom has a sister, Connie, and those are her parents, right? So that's how a family tree works if you've never seen a family tree before. You could make a family tree for your family if you wanted to. Um, so the first question we were supposed to answer is how old was Eric when Alyssa was born. So Alyssa is 10. It says on our chart that uh, Alyssa is 10. Eric is 14. So if we take away Alyssa's age from Eric's age, we should be able to figure out how old he was when, Eric, when Alyssa was born. So for number one, Eric was 14 and Alyssa is 10. So we need to take 10 away from 14. So that is one of those 10 pluses, which is kind of usually a kind of easier one to remember, those 10 and, and some more. So if I show that on the bead rack, I have 10 and I have four. And if I take all of Alyssa's age away, how many are left? There's four. So 10 plus four is 14, if we worked out it the other way. All right, so I think that Eric was Four when Alyssa was born. So again, it's good to make sure you explain your answer. Eric was four years old. That is our answer to the first question. Let's see what the second question is asking us. What age was Grandpa Lopez when Sister Emily was born? So we've got to look up here and we've got Grandpa, no, nope, that's Grandma Lopez. We've got Grandpa Lopez over here. He was 66. And Emily is seven. So I think we can use the same strategy, right? If we take away how old Emily is, then that should be how old her grandpa was when she was born. So we need to take away seven. This is a different problem though, right? This is not gonna fit on here because I don't have 60 beads. So maybe I could go back to thinking about my number line. So if I have 66 
And I'm going backwards now, I'm subtracting, right? So I'm gonna put my 66 here so I can show that where I'm going down to, because remember with subtraction, numbers get smaller, the amount gets smaller, right? So if I have 66 and I need to take away seven, hmm, seven's kind of a weird number though, right? What would be easy to take away from the 66? A six, right? What if I took away the six, what would that give me? 60. And then how much more do I have to take away? What's the difference between six and seven? Just one, right? Seven, six. So I need to take away one more and we would find out that he was 59. We also could just count backwards to check, couldn't we? 66, 65, 64, 63, 62, 61, 60, 59. Takes a little longer than pulling it apart in chunks, and that's why we've been talking about using a lot of groups. But we could check it that way too if we wanted to make sure. Okay, and we have to make sure that we answered our question. What age was Grandpa Lopez when Emily's sister Emily was born? We think he was 59, right? Grandpa was 59 years old. All right. I think we have prob probably time to do one more of our questions. So let's look and see what three is asking. How old was Grandma Perez when her son Jesse was born? Explain how you figured it out. Ooh, this one's wanting us to explain a little bit more. It's not just asking us for the answer. So Grandma Perez is right here. She was 68. Jesse is 41. So if she was 68 now and Jesse is 41, then we need to take away Jesse's age and see what she was, right? So 68 minus 41. Definitely can't do that on the bead rack. I think we definitely need to use a number line for this one, right? So I'm going to get my number line here. I'm going to start with 68. And I need to take away 41. What should I take away first? I might just take the, the tens away, right? 40. It's kind of a big jump, so I'm going to make show a bigger jump. And if I'm at 68 and I go 58, 48, 38, 28, that was just like counting up our hundreds chart, going backwards on our hundreds of chart by tens, right? We'd be at 28, and then we need to take one more away, and that was pretty simple, right? 28, 27. So I think that she was 27 when Uncle Jesse was born. So Grandma was 27 when Jesse was born. And don't forget, this one asks us to explain. And we do have our picture here to show, but we could also say, I started at 68 and took away 40 and then one. And you can even say on the number line if you wanted to but I kind of ran out of room, so I think we'll leave it there. All right, I think that's all the time for problem solving that we have today. It's time now for Ms. Karnas to read us a story. Hello, kiddos. We're gonna use the document camera to help us today, so I'm gonna take just a moment to make sure that's running and make sure we can see everything we need to see while we're reading. Thank you so much, Mrs. Ovechain. Okay. So today's story is about something that most of us really like to have in the summer. It's cold and sweet 
and it comes in lots of flavors, and you can add things to it. Can you guess what it is? It's ice cream. Okay, so let's check our book. Give it a second. Okay, so today's book is called The Sunday Scoop, and it's written by Stuart J. Murphy and illustrated by Cynthia Jabbar. And it is a Harper Collins book, and it looks yummy. All right. Ooh, we get to start by looking at some really yummy looking chocolate sundaes. So many choices. We could have chocolate with different toppings and sauces. We could have vanilla with different toppings and sauces. This story is all about choices for making sundaes in the Sunday scoop. Winnie, the lady in charge of the cafeteria, was running the ice cream booth for the school picnic. Lauren, James, Emily, and Winnie's cat, Marshmallow, were all on hand to help out. I have a stupendous idea. Let's make sundaes, said Winnie. Cool, said James. If we make all kinds of different sundaes, we'll have the best picnic booth at the picnic. Put on your thinking cap, said Winnie. What kind of ice cream should we serve? Chocolate, said Lauren. That's my favorite. Bubble gum, said James. Peppermint stick, said Emily. Whoa, that's too many, complained Winnie. Let's just have vanilla and chocolate. Aw, see what happens next. Now, what's the scoop on the sauces, asked Winnie. Vanilla with caramel, said Emily. Caramel is my favorite. Chocolate with hot fudge, said Lauren. They already sound yummy, said James. Fabulous, said Winnie. I'll draw up a chart on my chalkboard. If we have two kinds of ice cream and two kinds of sauce, that makes, let's see, how many kinds of sundaes? It looks like four, said James. Let's take a look. Let's check James and see if he's right. Are there four choices for sundaes? We could have vanilla with hot fudge. That's one choice. Or vanilla with caramel. That's two choices. We could have chocolate with hot fudge. That's a third choice. Or chocolate with caramel sauce. That's a fourth choice. James was right. So far, they have four kinds of sundaes that they can serve at their booth at the picnic. What about nuts, said Lauren? And sprinkles, said James. Sprinkles are my favorite. Right on, said Winnie. Sundays need toppings too. I hope that will be enough different combinations, said Emily, frowning. It's more than you think, said Winnie. So let's go ahead and add in those extra pieces and see how many choices they have now. So they've added more toppings. You can also now get sprinkles or nuts on each, right? chart, even though we're using it to think about different combinations we could have for Sundays, it reminds me a little bit of that family tree chart that you were just looking at also, doesn't it? It has a different purpose, but it is helping us to organize, which is what both charts did. Okay, so now let's see how many choices we've got, okay? And I think we might um, 
even use the whiteboard to help us think about these as we go. So we have, you could have vanilla with hot fudge sauce and sprinkles. That's one choice. We'll use tallies to keep track. You could have vanilla with hot fudge and nuts. That's a second choice. You could have vanilla with caramel sauce and sprinkles. That's a third choice. You could have vanilla with caramel sauce and nuts. That's a fourth choice. So four choices just from vanilla ice cream. So how many do you think we'll have with chocolate? Do you have a prediction? Let's check. You could have chocolate with hot fudge and sprinkles. That's another choice. We're up to five. You could have chocolate with hot fudge and nuts. That's a sixth choice. You could have chocolate with caramel sauce and sprinkles. That's a seventh choice. Or you could have chocolate with caramel and nuts. Wow, that is eight different choices. Let's see if that's what they came up with in the book. Emily was worried there wouldn't be enough choices. Each Sunday we'll have one flavor of ice cream, one sauce, and one topping. The first combination is vanilla, hot fudge, and sprinkles. That's right what we came up with, right? Oh, I get it. Or you could have vanilla, caramel, and sprinkles. That's great, said James. Now there are eight different choices. That's plenty. So that's exactly how many choices we got when we made Winnie's chart up here. The day of the picnic was sunny and warm. Everybody wanted Sundays. Let's get scooping, said Winnie. Look at the line, Lauren whispered to Emily. Emily looked up. I hope we'll still have all of our favorites left for ourselves. Whew, that is a lot of people waiting for Sundays. Emily scooped, James poured the sauce, Winnie added the nuts, and Lauren did a little dance as she shook out the sprinkles. And a one, and a two, and a whoops, she said. Uh oh, what happened to the sprinkles? They spilled all over. That was all the sprinkles we had, complained Emily. Yeah, said James, there goes my favorite. Marshmallow didn't seem to mind. Better change the sign, said Winnie. All right, let's take off. We don't have any sprinkles now. Now, how many choices do we have? We did have eight choices, right? We had eight, but without sprinkles, we've got one vanilla caramel with nuts. So we've got just vanilla hot fudge and nuts, one choice, or vanilla caramel and nuts, two choices, and two choices for chocolate, right? So we're back down to just four types of sundaes. James started to pull the caramel sauce for the next Sunday. Watch out for marshmallow, said Lauren. Where, said James. James, said Emily, look where you're pouring. Oops, said James. Uh-oh, it looks like we're out of another topping. Hmm, no more caramel. That's it for the caramel sauce, said Lauren. My favorite, said Emily sadly. Now there's even less Sundays to choose from. How many could we make? We could do vanilla, hot fudge, and nuts, or chocolate, hot fudge, and nuts. Only two kinds of Sundays left. Oh boy, things are changing fast. The sun got hotter and hotter. Scoop faster, Winnie told Emily. The chocolate ice cream is turning into chocolate soup. Emily scooped as fast as she could, but it wasn't fast enough. There goes my favorite, sighed Lauren. It looks like Marshmallow's favorite too. Look at that cat. Better change the sign, Winnie said. Okay, so what do we have to cover up now? Now we're out of chocolate. Oh no. How many choices do we have now of Sundays? Hmm. How many do we have? We could only get vanilla, hot fudge, and nuts. Just one choice.
That was the last person in line, said Emily. Thank goodness. Now we can have our own Sundays. But there are no more sprinkles, said James. Or caramel sauce, said Emily. No chocolate ice cream either, added Lauren. Meow, said Marshmallow. By gum, you're right, Winnie said. There's just one kind of Sunday left. That is exactly what we figured out, isn't it? Vanilla ice cream, hot fudge, and nuts, said Winnie. My favorite. Pass me a spoon. So, it all ended well, at least for Winnie. And I think everybody got some ice cream. Let me just ask you a question, thinking about our story. So, let's restore our chart. Pretend that we still had every flavor and every topping. So, do you remember how many choices this was? It was eight. We had four different options with vanilla ice cream and four different options for chocolate. But I'm wondering this, what would happen if we added another topping? So what if for each of these we added a cherry? Some people like to have a cherry on their Sunday, right? Let's see how this changes our number of choices. We had eight. Let's count up how many we have now, and we'll use tallies again to figure it out. So this time, with just one more topping, we could have vanilla, hot fudge, sprinkles, that's one. Vanilla, hot fudge with a cherry, that's two. Vanilla, hot fudge with nuts, that's three. So can you predict how many choices we'll get with the caramel sauce? What do you think? Vanilla, caramel, and sprinkles, that's another one. Vanilla, caramel, and a cherry, that's a fifth choice. Vanilla, caramel, and nuts, that's a sixth choice. Are you getting hungry? So six choices up here when we add another topping. How many choices do you think we'll get for the chocolate? The same number, right? So six choices with vanilla, six choices with chocolate. By adding just one topping, we now have 12 choices. So this is something fun you can think about at home because every day we have, um, we make choices about combinations, everyday combinations like what outfit you're gonna wear in the morning and what combinations of shirt, pants, socks, or what value meal you're gonna get at the drive-through and which pieces you're gonna choose. So maybe at home, make your own Sunday scoop chart with your family's favorite flavors. See how many choices you end up with. Or try to chart out some of those other everyday choices like how many different options do you have for an outfit? Or how many different ways could you order your favorite combo meal at the drive-thru. So there's some fun ways to think about math just in our everyday life. And now we're gonna bring Mrs. Ovenshane back up. I'm hungry now. I know, all that ice cream choices. I was like, hmm. All right, we're gonna play a vocabulary game in a minute, but, because we're gonna wrap up our vocabulary. But I also wondered, like, what if I didn't want hot fudge or caramel? Would that make the choices even bigger, right? If you could just get vanilla and sprinkles or vanilla and cherry or vanilla and nuts. So you could even make the, the choices even more. But the other thing I noticed with Ms. Carnes's activity is that there was some doubling there too, right? Six on top, six on bottom, which made me think more about this problem. And I think I need to revise my thinking here as I thought about the problem. So I'm gonna ask Ms. Carnes what she thinks too, and then we're gonna, we'll play our vocabulary game. So it said 16 fleas, and then each flea brought out two more. So should I have doubled and then doubled again, Miss Carnes? Oh, I think so. I think so. Each flea brought... brought two more. So this is just one more set of fleas. 
Uh -huh. So the last problem was a double and double again problem. So we still need to add 16 more. So if I add another 10, that'll get me to 42. And another six would get me to 48. So I'm revising that I think for the last one, there were 48 fleas all together. Right. I think I could have put those next to each other. That is such a great thing about math. You can keep thinking about a problem and you can come back to it and you can yep. change your thinking or revise your answer. I did. I needed to keep thinking about that. It was a little tricky, right? It was double and double again. I just got into that habit of just doubling. All right. So we are going to play our vocabulary game that we have played before, headbands. We've got our vocabulary up here, smallest and largest, tens and ones, quarters, dimes, nickels, pennies, less and more, less than, greater than, add in some equation, addition, plus, subtraction, minus, estimate, measure, inch. We have done a lot over the last couple of weeks, haven't we? Look at all these words we learned. Um, triangle, circle, quadrilateral, that was the special four word for a four-sided shape, like a square or a rectangle. Pentagon, hexagon, patterns, digits, length, double, which we talked about today a lot in different ways. And then we added this week, logic, odd and even, t-chart, count, number story, and before and after. So those will be new in our words that we're trying to Yes, you okay. have your words over there? I've got my words. All right. And here's the timer. All right. So, all right. Can you see my word, everybody? I see her word. Okay, so this is a kind of number that if you try to split it in half, each unit in the number won't have a partner or a pair. Oh. They don't match up. I remember Ms. Karnas talking about that with the frames. Okay. And... Our picture on our chart even shows one extra, but it's like that, isn't it? The groups don't line up, so it is odd. Do I have odd up here? You do have odd. All right. Let's see. Okay, so um, this could be a part of a two-digit number, maybe, and it would be the part on the right, the digit on the right side, that's talking about just single units. Ones, isn't it? You I know ones. that one. We've been using that a lot. All right, maybe I can squeeze in one more. Oops, I kind of looked at that one. <laughs> I don't want to cheat. This is a coin. It's our only coin that is copper colored and it is worth the least amount of penny, money. Penny, penny, penny. All right. All right, I okay. think I'm out of time. I think it's my turn. Okay, so my ready? word right side up. Can you see my word? It is. Okay. Oh, this is when you have a number sentence. Oh, I used one of the words. Darn it. It's okay. When you have an equation, I'll use that word instead. When you have an equation and then you tell, you add words to tell about what's happening. Oh, and it's a kind of problem you have to solve. It's a kind of problem you have to solve. Yeah. It's a number it's, word? It's, no, no, like um, when you were reading your book, you were telling the A story. Thing. Oh, it's okay. a number story. Boy, that one was hard not to say the words. Yes. Okay. Mm. This is the opposite of largest. Oh, it must be smallest. Yep. One more? Yep. Mmm, okay. If you have a number, each piece of it is named this word. You might have a number that only has one of these, but you might have a number that has two or three. A digit, like we talked about ones before. Yes. All right, I think it's your turn again. Okay. All right. Ooh, another word? coin word. It's all about the a money today. Coin word. Okay. So this is a silver colored coin. It's worth more than a penny, but less than a dime. More than a penny. So that's one cent and less than a dime and dimes are 10 cents. 
So it has to be a nickel, five cents a nickel? It is a nickel. All um, right. We had Mrs. Ovenchain use some logic to figure that out. I did. How about that? Whoops, am I getting that in the right place? Can you see it? You can see it. It's right side up. All right. Okay. Um, so this is something that you can do with, um, you can write this down. You could do it with sound. We've been doing it with calendar. If you did it with sound, it might be like... And oh, it repeats oh, a lot of oh, times. Oh, calendar. It's a pattern, isn't it? It is a pattern. Oh, you tricked me a little bit when you said that about sound. I was like, what? <laughs> okay. So this is a word we use quite a bit. Um, oh, sorry. I have to show you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and um, so it's the opposite of less. If you don't have less, then you have more. All right. Okay. Okay. I, th I think it's you. I think we're swapping over. Okay. Ah, I did a lot of that today, not with this problem, but with the problem about ages when I was taking away. Oh, when you're taking away, you're doing subtraction. Yep. Nice. Okay, let's see. Oh, so this is, um, yep, let me look at one of these. So if we said this was an odd pattern because there was an extra one, then your number represents this kind of a pattern where the groups are the same. Even. It's an even number. Every unit has a partner. Yep. How are we doing? Right. One more? I think you can do at least one more. <gasps> Oops. Uh, Yikes. This is the word that I thought that maybe Ms. Karnas was describing when she said you could do it with sound. Because you can use words to do this, or you can be touching things and saying words together. And that's usually, when you use just this part of the word, it means you're, you're touching things and saying a number. Oh, like when you count. Yeah. All right. Sometimes we count just orally, right? But a lot of times we're counting things. If we're counting things, that's right. All right, let's see. I think we're out of time, so we'll flip it and I'll take it. Okay. Is it on there? Yep, it's on there. Show the kids oh, at home. Show the kids. So this is the answer to an addition problem. It's the math word for the answer. Okay. The uh, is it total? It's it means the same thing as total, but it's it's for addition. Okay. What is? Oh, I know what it is because a total could be any answer that you get, but with addition you get the sum. You got it. All right. Oh, this is sliding down on oh, me. Oh, it Can is. You see it? Okay. So this is another addition word. Um, there's two of these in the problem, and you put them together to get the sum. Oh, okay. It's um, add, add in. It is add in. That's a big math word. All right. I think I can squeeze one more in here. I think so. Okay. So um, this is a standard unit of measure. You can find it on a ruler. Ah, well, I know there are two things you could find on there. You could, well, you probably could find it even smaller, but there's centimeters and there's inches. So, and I think we only talked about inches. You got it, it's an inch. Inches are bigger than centimeters. Okay. All right, I think I'm out of time. You're out of time, should we swap? I think we have what enough you for you to do maybe one or two. Okay. Ah, okay. This is really big. Giant. No, when you, it was one of our words and it was the opposite of smallest. If something was the smallest or it was the... Oh, the largest. Yes. Okay. All right, let's see if we can get one, one more. more. Oh, what, what is this one? Miss Karnas read a book about using these kinds of puzzles. They're shape puzzles. And there's some triangles and quadrilaterals in there that you use to make, you made, you used them to make pictures. Do you remember oh. that? Grandfather Tang, it's a tangram. Exactly. All right, I think we are gonna have to wrap it up for today. So just to kind of review, today's number was nine. You could make a chart for today's number on your own at home if you haven't already. Your counting jar numbers are 20 or 40 or 80. And um, there are more problems on the double down. If you download that, there are additional problems we didn't get to. 
And the age one, they ask some questions about things that are twice as many, people who are twice as many years, which is another way of doubling. And I think that's about it. We had our practice. So we would really like to thank you for joining us this summer. And we will hope you enjoy the rest of your summer. And we'll see you next time with At Home with APS. All right. Bye, gonna, kiddos. We're going to say bye with our little... Happy summer. Happy summer.